The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The capacitance attenuator demonstrates the nature of solutions to Laplace's equation. This is the two-dimensional form of Laplace's equation in Cartesian coordinates, x and y. Product solutions to this equation illustrate the nature of a potential that is periodic in one direction, the x direction. The hyperbolic sine function, which is a combination of exponentials, represents the essentially exponential decay in a direction perpendicular to the direction of periodicity, y. The potential can be viewed as the vertical dimension on this floor. This is the potential. The x direction, the direction of periodicity, is that direction, and here's our sine function. This is the y direction, and here's our hyperbolic sine function. More of the x dependence and the y dependence. Lines of equal potential on our model are represented by these wires. Lines of constant altitude are the lines of equal potential. This particular one is rectangular. Here's another way to represent our potential function. This is the x direction. This is the y direction. With these clamps, we're holding the membrane down on these edges. On this edge, we're going to raise the potential. These boundaries are clamped to zero potential. Now we've raised this potential to a potential V. Under uniform tension, the membrane altitude satisfies Laplace's equation. Far from the elevated edge, the membrane then has the same shape as with the model. Rather than using wires to show the lines of equal altitude, the equal potentials, we now use backlighting. Here's what it looks like from the top. The elevated potential is uniform. Not a sine function. However, the square distribution can be represented by a Fourier series. This amounts to a superposition of solutions like the one we've seen, except they have more wiggles in the x direction and therefore decay more rapidly in the y direction. What we see is the potential if three of the walls enclosing a rectangular region are grounded, and the fourth has a uniform distribution in potential. The electric field lines are perpendicular to the equipotentials and follow paths of steepest descent. If they begin on positive charges here, they terminate on negative charges on the boundaries.
A boundary that has zero potential nevertheless supports surface charges. The surface charge is proportional to the slope of the adjacent potential. This is a cross-section of the electrical system that has been pictured. These boundaries are grounded, while this one is at the potential V. If V were positive, this charge on the lower surface would be negative. In the actual experiment, a conducting box is grounded on two side surfaces and virtually grounded on the bottom surface through a small resistor R. In the experiment, the resistance R is the one megohm resistance of this scope, which is used to measure the voltage of the lower electrode. Here are the grounded side walls. Their spacing is A. The top electrode, here a distance B above, is driven by this AC source. Here's the top electrode. Its potential is determined by the oscillator. That's the top trace of the scope pattern. Here's the bottom electrode. Its potential is measured by the bottom trace on the scope. We'll use our solutions to Laplace's equation to find the net charge on the lower electrode. Before we make any measurements, we should put our second sidewall on the apparatus. Conservation of charge requires that the current through the one megohm resistance of the scope be the rate of change of this charge with respect to time. Q is proportional to the driving voltage. Our input voltage varies sinusoidally in time, so the measured output voltage is 90 degrees out of phase with the input voltage. Our modal solution predicts the normalized peak amplitude of this output voltage, V sub O. U is proportional to the input voltage, V. The experiment is designed to demonstrate the dependence of the output voltage on the spacing B, the spacing between the input and output electrodes. The decay of the potential in the direction perpendicular to the electrode is the reason for the hyperbolic sign in the denominator. According to our theory, the natural log of the normalized output voltage has this dependence on the distance between input and output electrodes. On the log plot, with increasing B over A, the function quickly becomes a straight line with a slope minus pi. As the lower electrode is withdrawn, its potential decreases exponentially. The output voltage decays with electrode spacing because charges induced on the input electrode have their images either on the side walls of the box or on the output electrode. If B over A is small, almost all of the images are on the output electrode. But as we withdraw it, more and more of the images are on the side walls and fewer on the output electrode. How well does the theory predict this attenuation curve? Here are the numbers. To put data on our normalized plot, we first evaluate U.
we have a width W of 17 centimeters. The frequency, 100 hertz. The scope resistance is one megohm. With an input of 10 volts peak, U equal 48 millivolts peak. For A equal 4.4 centimeters, and a spacing between input and output electrodes, B equal one centimeter, we measure 28 millivolts peak. This data point falls about here. Here are some other data points that we've taken. According to our model, the output voltage should be proportional to the frequency. This is true if the frequency is taken from 100 hertz to 200 hertz. Remember, the upper trace is the upper driving electrode. And on a different scale, the lower one is the lower electrode voltage. However, if the frequency is taken from 1,000 hertz to 2,000 hertz, the output ceases to be linear in the frequency. With the frequency this high, the current through the output resistor is too large, too large to make the potential of the output electrode negligible. We have demonstrated how solutions to Laplace's equation that are periodic in one direction decay in the perpendicular direction.